Welcome back. Casey Campbell here with Great Lakes Post, and we are pleased to be joined by uh, the spokesperson for the Detroit Grand Prix, of course, Merrill Kane. Of course, you, you know him. He's been on here uh, quite a bit. Um, you guys made an announcement this morning that you have intentions to move the Detroit Grand Prix in 2023 to from Belle Isle to the streets of Detroit, where it once was held. It hasn't been on there since 1991, but it look it's looking like... Um, you know, you're in the beginning stages. Of course, you presented it at the Detroit City Council meeting last night. Of course, Bud Danker did. But overall, why the change? Kind of talk about that. Yeah, Casey, so first off, thanks for having me. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. I think we look at this as a great opportunity to create a homecoming for the Grand Prix, right? As you, as you mentioned, uh, the event was born on the streets of Detroit, uh, began as a Formula One race in 1982. Uh, ran on the Detroit uh, street circuit from 82 through through 91 before the making the transition to Belle Isle. And Belle Isle has been great. It's a, it's a wonderful place for a race. Uh, it's, it's a jewel of the city of Detroit. Um, you know, we, we've loved our time on Belle Isle. I, I think we really look at this as uh, there's a certain energy and excitement that comes with street racing. We've certainly seen it uh, and felt it um, in IndyCar uh, with IMSA, uh, you know, events like St. Petersburg and Long Beach, Toronto, and, and what we experienced this year. And I think uh, our chairman, Bud Danker, as you mentioned, presented the city council last night and mentioned it, that seeing the, the new uh, IndyCar race on the streets of Nashville this year really kind of lit a fire. And you see what, uh, what that event really meant to the city, how, how the residents really embraced it. And it, it became kind of a signature event in, in really the first year. Uh, I think we, we see how that could really affect and bring back Detroit and help the, coming out of you know, the pandemic and, and create a really big event downtown and, and with a lot of energy. And, and the way we've tried to put this together as we make the proposal to possibly return the event back to downtown Detroit in 2023 is creating a lot of opportunity for city residents, the people of Detroit uh, to, to really become closer, get, get more involved in the event, you know, whether that's being close to the area businesses, the hotels, the restaurants, the bars, the casinos, being able to experience all that and still experience the race and, and, and do it in, in a way that is very welcoming. And uh, for, for a lot of people, they'll be able to experience the race for free. Um, as Bud mentioned in his presentation, about 50% of the racing circuit is going to be accessible and available to fans for free. Uh, you know, we're going to create some temporary bridges over Jefferson Avenue into the island on Jefferson where with viewing platforms so fans can watch the racing, watch the action, see the vendors, the food trucks, uh, get to experience the bands, you know, Heart Plaza, uh, Freedom Plaza, all, all part of it, right? I'll, I'll be able to, to for, for residents to get a sense of the Grand Prix, still experience all the businesses downtown, create a, a track. Uh, it's going to be exciting, shorter than what the track was and a little bit different configuration from when it was held downtown last time uh, and really make sure that it's open and accessible, creating, you know, minimizing the traffic uh, delays and, and, and closures as much as possible so that people can still do business and come in downtown and still get around easily. Uh, obviously, the, it's going to impact uh, some parts of Jefferson Avenue and Atwater during race weekend, but uh, people will still be able to come in and get around and, and we're really excited about what this could mean to the city moving forward. So your look, of course, just to clarify, next year's Detroit Grand Prix will be held on Belle Isle. Absolutely. And, yep. just, yeah, and we, and like we talked about this morning, this had nothing to do, of course, the relationship that you have with Belle Isle is still pretty good. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we put so much energy and effort into Belle Isle and, and, and you know, the stated goal of the event, you know, since we brought the event back, under the current, you know, promoter and partnership uh, in, in 2007 has really been to improve Belle Isle. And I think we're proud of what we've done there. Uh, you know, over $13.5 million in improvements uh, between the Grand Prix and our partners. You know, it's a nonprofit event. It's really a, a give back to the island and to the city. And, uh, you know, Belle Isle still needs work. We're, we're not going to walk away from, from the island and all the work that's been done there. Certainly, even if we're successful in this proposal to bring the event back downtown, Belle Isle will always be a place that's special to all of our hearts and, and uh, some place that we want to you know, continue to invest in and support. Um, but no, we've got a great relationship with the Department of Natural Resources, the Belle Isle Conservancy, uh, and, and we care deeply about Belle Isle. And, and if the proposal, if we're not successful in doing this, 
you know, the event will continue on Belle Isle. It's, like you said, it's a, it's a, it's a great place, unique uh, circuit uh, for racing, and, and we love what we do there. But this, this is just a great opportunity to really add to the city, uh, add to the event, create some new energy and excitement, and, and really take it to the next level. So the contract with the Grand Prix goes through 2024, if I'm not mistaken. So you would have to opt out of the contract early. Obviously, that's still being worked out, you know, with the state and all that fun stuff. Kind of, kind of talk about that process and how that would have to be amended. Yeah, so the, the current agreement that uh, is in place uh, has a renewal. So it really extends through 2022 with a two-year option for renewal. So if we're successful with the proposal, it really just means we're not going to exercise that renewal. Uh, for the additional two years of 2023 and 2024. So uh, again, that's why this the timing of this really makes sense. It really is a, is a perfect opportunity to try and make this transition. And also, you know, if we're successful uh, getting approval from city council uh, to, to relocate the event back downtown, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. And, and being able to have a year and a half to work on that and, and put plans in place and, and execute this the way we want to, um, you know, we need every, every day uh, of, of that. And that's why, you know, we want to try and move quickly to um, make the proposal to get this in front of the right people, have the right meetings with, you know, neighborhood groups, city council, residents, answer any questions from the business community, uh, and make sure that people understand that we are trying to do this the, uh, the best way possible for, for everyone in the city to make this a win-win. So kind of explain what the timeline is of what's next? Yeah, so we're, we really, the, the first step in this process, as you mentioned, we really began on Tuesday night with Bud Danker presenting to city council and it's really just a short presentation. We have a, uh, a more in-depth meeting with city council and city residents uh, on Friday, this Friday uh, at 5 p.m. virtual meeting. Uh, we have a couple of community group meetings uh, planned for next week uh, as well. And then we'll wait to see where city council wants us to go. Uh, we, we fully expect that they may have some questions, they may ask for some more information. We'll continue to meet with the other agencies that we need to engage with in the meantime, uh, Department of Transportation, you know, Homeland Security, the, the other uh, agencies that uh, will we'll need their help to, to make this happen. Uh, we'll continue uh, along the process and then uh, wait for guidance from city council on what they need to try to keep the ball moving here. So what's the response that you've been getting from city council from, from from city residents, what what's everyone been saying about this? Because from watching all the news coverage, um, you know, on TV or on the radio, it's been pretty positive. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, we've been we've been pleasantly, you know, uh, I wouldn't say surprised, but it's been great to see that 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 people are have looked at this the way we kind of look at it. Is it's it's a great return for the event. It's going back to its roots, and it's got some real positive. Uh, aspects for what it means for the city and for the event itself. So, uh, you know, again, initial presentation just last night, Tuesday night, uh, and, and things went well with city council and, and the residents that were on there, but we certainly expect that we're going to have some more discussion on this. We, we, we uh, want to make sure we hear the feedback from the community. You know, what, what are we not thinking of? We think we've done a pretty good job on our homework up until this point, but we also know there's, there's certainly uh, ideas and, uh, you know, things that we need to try to make sure that we address as we move forward with this. So we're really looking forward to that part where we can engage with the community, uh, hear what people are saying, you know, what, what they would like to see and, and um, you know, how they feel about this. And then we'll, we'll, make, uh, we'll make our uh, determination from there about how we move forward. And, and if there's some things that we need to adjust in the proposal or plan for that we haven't thought about, we'll certainly do that. So when could a decision possibly be made? Because I think that's the that's the question everyone's asking. When could this, you know, be announced, or when could this, when could a decision be? You think? Yeah, the green flag, so to speak, right? Yes. Uh, we we hope we have that green flag here in the next few weeks, but we we will again. We'll wait for city council's guidance. We're you know, we, we don't enter into this with a, hey, we're on a countdown clock here. Um, it's certainly a new uh, process for us, but uh, something that we've, you know, we've got some um, great people on board that are helping uh, guide us through the process and we'll, we'll roll with the punches. But we hope that, you know, we, we can get a decision and, and uh, hear from city council here in the next few weeks, but we'll see where we go. Okay, so this event also, for people that don't know, the clarif this event is controlled by the same people that also run the IndyCar series. Of course, that's Penske Entertainment Group. Um, what, whose idea was this to bring it back? Was it Bud's, Rogers? Of course, they also control the series as well, along with Mike. What, whose idea was kind of this? 
Well, I, I'm not sure that there's one person who takes credit for it, right? It's something we've kind of talked about as a, as a group and, and an idea that uh, has been out there. I mean, it, you know, as I learned, you know, when I first came on board with the Grand Prix back in 2007, when you, your name's associated with the Detroit Grand Prix, you hear from a lot of people about the history of this event and what it meant to them. And uh, so I think, you know, it's kind of been in everyone's heads along the way of, hey, could you ever come back downtown? Wouldn't it be great if you come back downtown? So it's one of those things where, you know, you, you think about it and you think, is that even a realistic possibility? I think as we kind of did our homework and, and looked at more things, and especially, again, seeing the energy and what these street races and these, and these great urban markets really mean, uh, it, it really became more of the motivation to let's figure out a way to get this done. We'll keep you. We'll keep you updated on that. Of course, um, uh, obviously, keep stay tuned to, with this update because this if this happens, it's going to be a big, big thing um, for sure. Meryl Kane, I, I think it's going to be great for the city. It's going to be great for the residents. It's certainly going to be great for our event, and, and we look forward to it. We're excited about it. Yeah, well, yeah. Of course, uh, I, I called my dad this morning. He's like, "Yeah, I was down there all there." It's like, "Yeah, um, it's uh, it was pretty fun." Um, yeah. But yeah, Meryl Kane the spokesperson for the Detroit Grand Prix. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, we'll keep you updated um, as this goes along. You got it, Casey. Thank you. Appreciate your support.